Hello, Facebook. Welcome to Tech Talk Live. It's Pamela Gomez, and today my Tech special Talk guest is Mr. Jonathan Tripp. How are you, Jonathan? I'm doing great, Pam. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. I just um, I'm so excited that you accepted the invitation to come on the show today. It's just um, I'm delighted. Well, this is great. I I love like getting out and talking with people, and you know, I, I you know, and be live here is this is a fun platform to be on. This is a fun place to be. This is super easy to use. I love it. It's just um, user friendly. I would recommend it for any of my followers who want to start live streaming to go to um, be live. But Jonathan, just to, to elaborate a bit more about yourself, I read your profile and I see where you're a father of five, the funniest thing, husband of one, <laughs> a live streaming host. And I'm laughing because that just tickled me. A live streaming host, uh, you're also a social media optimist and something else I'm missing. Um, and startup advocate. I think that's, that's the one. The one. Yes. That's right. Tell us a little bit about each of those, um, especially the startup advocate. I'd love to hear more about that. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I always start, I, I always start with trying to be just a, a little bit personal. So, you know, like I'm actually a real person and I know that kind of sounds redundant, but you know, so I talk about like, you know, I have a family and, you know, and, and I love to spend time with them. They're some of the most, if not the most important people in my life. So, you know, that's part of why I do what I do and why we start businesses and things like this and why we work so hard. Um, so, you know, I always start with that. I, I, you guys, if you guys don't already know, like this is, this is my, this is what I, I'm, I, I love doing. This is my mug shot, you know, <laughs> um, and I do those actually quite a bit and we try to have fun with it, uh, you know, things like that. But beyond that, um, I, I really do believe in, in the power in, in, of, of social media and using it to reach, uh, connect with new friends, uh, grow your business and, and, you know, help share the message of your brand and things like this. Um, but then particularly as a startup advocate, um, I, I think that there's so much, I think there's so much to be done and learned. Um, when you have that startup mindset, it's not just about, well, how much funding can I get? It's really about how much can I grow it? Um, and, and I, I like a lot of, I, I like a lot of that kind of thinking rather than you have to have everything planned out before you make any step. I like the way a lot of startups think, which is how fast can we make this happen? And I like that. And I think that's a lot of fun more in business than just sitting back and making sure that your 200 page business plan is perfectly written before you execute. I agree. And do you recommend that entrepreneurs and startups have a website? You know, I have been really on the fence. You asked me five years ago, I would have said, absolutely. You must have a website. And now I'm kind of like, I can see some benefits in it. But uh, to be honest, I'm starting to bend towards the, you don't necessarily have to have a website, but you definitely have to have a social media presence. And because we're not always about searching for startups, be, but we're definitely searching for the services or the products that they use. And the most ways that we know about that is through social media. And I know, I know I'm gonna get some, some evil emails and messages from people saying, are you kidding me? And they're gonna be all my SEO friends. <laughs> oh, please, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't bombard him with that. No, but, I welcome um, the challenge, email me out, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> but. Jonathan, can you tell us how can they reach you though? Are you on Twitter or do you have a Facebook uh, or even a website that they can find you at? Well, the, the, so, so the answer, I'll, we'll start with that last one and it's because it goes right along with it. Well, do you have a website? And the answer is yes, I do. I do have a website. It's jonathantrip.com. And so it's my full name and it's the .com. And that's where, um, if you're, if you're more interested in like, in what I'm doing, uh, both as, as like a service as a, you know, media, social media consultant, you need content writing, those kinds of things. But I also have another one, which is jonathantrip.live. 
And that's where people can catch me at the last show that I've done or the latest thing that I broadcast out. And I'd like to use that one as well. So one feels really is a legit straight out website. The other one is more of, it's kind of like just my social post page. It's where you catch me. But I mean, I am on Instagram. You can find me at uh, John Tripp. Um, you can catch me on Twitter. I mean, you just messaged me before we started our show today on Twitter. And, you know, I'm so I'm there. But um, and then my fan page, those are probably the easiest places to get a hold of me outside of maybe email. But I don't want we don't always use email very well, do we? No, you know, I'm happy you mentioned that you have two websites because that's what happened to me with Tech Talk Live. It came about somewhat by coincidence, and I had already started a aromatherapy business. I had been live streaming about essential oils, and I created what I thought was the most fabulous website because I did it myself, onaturalaromatherapy.com. Once that was created, um, I realized that I could do it, and, and there were some tech issues that people were asking me. So I also have a degree in technology. So my degree is in MIS and I was not using it, not at all. So then a light bulb went off, a few friends asking questions and I have this information. So I started Tech Talk Live on Blab every Friday night at seven. Well, of course, Blab went away. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I was just building my business. I had a following. So I created Tech Talk Live and I took it to YouTube and it still remains every Friday night at 7 p.m. As a matter of fact, tomorrow my guest is Terry Johnson. She's coming back. We had such a great time last week. We recorded and we went over the time. So we decided let's do it again this Friday night at 7. So and Terry is a Jeff wonderful Jeff. guest. She is she fantastic. Is. She is super. But I also have another little niche that is super too. They're called the Work and Focus Group that consists of Eileen Smith, Beauty Bubble, Alfredo Tigolo, mm -hmm. Robert Lewis, Bo Astra, Bo. Oh my gosh, I can't remember Bo's last name, but oh my gosh. We all work well together and we plan and we strategize and we just help each other move to the next level. It's what we call work and focus. And I give a big shout out to them. The other thing I wanted to tell you about is Tech Talk Live only recently started its website. That's another creation I did. So mm -hmm. that website is techtalklive242.com. I would have loved to have done Tech Talk Live live, but not yet. That might be something in the future. Right. Because right. there I can do just what you say, maintain all of my live broadcasts. Even though now they're on YouTube. Right. The following it's using a dot live domain like that, and they are available. Um, mm -hmm. I think that once once I realized that that they were available and things, I saw it as a tremendous uh, value to be able to to jump right on it and grab uh, grab my name. Not only just because it was my name, but as a way to be able to share out. Hey, what's a better way? Whether I'm on uh, YouTube or you know, and right now we're alive on Instagram, uh, you know, on Periscope, where uh, on Facebook page or whatever, I'm able to to direct people using and build some real great content um, you know, with community through a dot .live domain. So that was one of the reasons why I picked that up and I happened to use that, that domain exclusively for that purpose. It's not forwarded to my, you know, to my .com or anything like this. I use it almost exclusively for my live, uh, you know, for most of my live broadcasts. That's fabulous. I would totally have done that had I not already um created the techtalklive.com. The other thing, Jonathan, I want to ask you about, and that relates to businesses. That question is, well, actually for you, how long have you been using social media for your business? Um, I, honestly, as soon as, soon as I 
had the business. And even to the point that prior to even launching or getting into it, I really seriously thought long and hard about what social media I wanted to use because that that changes the way that I talk about my business and the way that I relate in my business. It doesn't necessarily solve or change the 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 service or the problems that I'm solving, but it certainly does, especially as somebody that's working in social media, it's a big component about what I've done. So really it's social media has been a part of my business prior to even launching, even prior to getting started. And even now it's probably one of the biggest components of, of how I work within, you know, within my business. Would you mind sharing with us your favorite live streaming platform? Oh boy, that's a that's a real challenge, and you know that's man, that is a really good question. Um, so so here's here's the thing. I really I like Facebook in that it the potential for reach and the the way that it can be shared is it's unparalleled within social media world, right? I, although I have to say this, I'm really liking Instagram Live, and here's the reason. Okay. It's disappearing, which means that if if you don't catch me right now live on Instagram, you've missed the conversation. Now that really plays. That's very difficult for a lot of for a lot of businesses to 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 grasp because it doesn't answer the the ROI question. Like how, we're putting all this time and resource and thought and preparation into this content, and we can never use it again because it's gone. However. I find that the best connections that I've made and, and freshest connections are through things like Instagram Live, Instagram Stories. So that for me, that probably is my number one real live you know, platform that I would use, which is going to be Instagram. All right. Million dollar question. Okay. You think Snapchat's going to go away? I don't think it'll go away. I don't think it's going to have as impact. Uh, it's not going to be as impactful as uh, people expected it to be. Um, I think it's going to have to change and be something different in the same way that Twitter is realizing it has to be different in order to survive. Okay. What about YouTube Live, which is Hangouts, the old Google Hangouts. Now, the old Google Hangouts. That's right. Okay. So, what do I think is going to happen with YouTube Live? Um, I think that it will be used as a um, as a conduit to to broadcast live and to immediately archive um, as more of a think of it more of a repository of or a library of your content that you want to produce live, um, but you want to produce it at a very high quality level. Which I mean, to me. I think you can produce a much higher quality, visually speaking, uh, um, a broadcast than you can on Facebook. You know, uh, I mean, just the quality difference is different. It's only, you know, they only 11, you know, allow 720, uh, you know, on, on Facebook. But with um, with YouTube, you can go to much higher. You can go at least at the 1080. So I think there's a big difference there. I think, you know, I was torn about the two platforms. Right. YouTube Live. And Facebook, right? But for me, it's almost like they're the same because it's my sweet spot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been on YouTube Live for about four years now. Sorry, on YouTube with the channel, not going live, but putting videos up there. Mm -hmm. And now that you can go live from the platform, I think it's such a great um, benefit to businesses, especially because your videos are automatically archived. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's just so wonderful. But here, broadcasting on Facebook, I can always take these videos, repurpose them, add my little twist to music or what have you at the end and, and still put them up there. So. It's about the same, but it was a tough decision today. My next question for you is, how does one prepare a social media strategy? Well, um, the, the correct answer is very carefully. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, like one of the biggest things I think that when it comes to talking about social strategy, 
Um, I, I think the, some of the first questions that need to be answered are, are you looking to get new customers or are you looking to reach your existing customers? Um, you, you know, that that's a really big, big part of the question. I think another question is where, where are you already present? And if you're looking to reach your existing customers, then obviously then it's a, it's a, well, then you need to go where they are. Um, and I, I love to hear when people say, well, I'll, I'm not going to be on Facebook because my customers aren't really on Facebook. And I Oops, looks like Jonathan froze there for a minute. Oh, you're back. Sorry about that. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what what happened. But um, yeah, I I don't know how much of that you ca you caught. But I think you know to sum it up, really, it's um, to to be able to reach your customer on a on a uh, platform like Facebook means that you have to create content that's very competitive. It's very eye catching. Um, it has to deliver your message immediately. Yes. The other thing, and this question is coming to you from Robert Lewis. Robert Lewis asks, what are the best posting intervals and message mix for Facebook group and Instagram? Hmm. That's a re I really like that question. Um, the way I've thought about, and the way I've thought about posting intervals and things like that from uh, when it comes to uh, uh, social media, particularly Facebook, um, this is my, my thoughts have kind of changed over the over the years as as we've actually implemented and kind of studied because it used to be you find when the peak time and, and so the question was when was that and you know uh, uh, companies like Buffer that would do a um, uh, you, you know they would do a study and they would look at all of the peak times and all this and what the problem was we would get into a place where we were dealing with averages so the average of everybody trying to trying to post. And, but that's not how you market because we all know that if you try to, if you try to market to everybody, you're going to reach no one. And okay. so the best thing to do is to look and to see what is your audience? When is your audience uh, active? And sometimes that is going to have to take just good old, hear me out, good old trial and error. You're going to have to try some things. If you don't actually have analytics to look at, then you're going to need to try it out yourself. You're going to need to post video. You're going to need to post polls and questions and things that are going to grab their attention or it ask and require them to engage. Otherwise, guess what? It's just just noise or it becomes yeah. very irrelevant and people ignore it. And I'm sad to say the world's too busy to deal with that. Jonathan, so we're going to continue. Okay, My next great. question for you, Jonathan, is as an entrepreneur or a solopreneur, which is the best or oh, sorry, when is it best to use social media? As an entrepreneur, when is it best to use social media? I would say this, not, not every business uses or should be using social media the same way. I think one of the, one of the key aspects of using social media is you are, you, you are addressing in a very direct way uh, your message or your solution to a problem that someone specifically has. And by that, I mean, you don't just post that uh, you want the, in, in, in super general terms. Um, hey, have a great day. Because that to me, that doesn't really connect with me. But if you want to say, hey, I hope your coffee is warm today or, you know, like I hope the coffee keeps you warm today or something like that where like, I'm like, Oh, you know what? I really love coffee, Pam. I really love coffee. It's one of my favorite things in the world. So you tag me in that or you post it and I see it. And I'm like, Oh, that's pretty funny. I like that. And then you get a like, you get a share, you get a comment. And once you do something to get that conversation going, so how do entrepreneurs or startups specifically uh, use social media? It's to, it's, to, it's to drive engagement to talk about the solution they have to the problem that their audience has. It's, it's, a, it's a very, it's just when you're having a conversation with somebody, you don't just talk about yourself, you really talk about them. Show that you're interested in them. And I'm going to tell you, you will get a lot better response than if you just go on and talk about how great you are 
and how wonderful <laughs> all the things that you know and your personal experience and how you just have the solution to talk to them about what they're interested in and you'll get much better response. That leads me to another question. Do you support persons asking subscribers to subscribe or like, share, and comment on their social feeds? Oh, I do yeah. to an extent. I, I do think it's okay to, to encourage people or remind people. It, it, there's nothing wrong with the ask because even in sales, a lot of times how I, and I forget what the statistics are, but it's like 22% of, uh, of people, uh, uh, you know, of salesmen actually ask or follow up or something like that. I mean, the, the, the real, the real point of that, the, of the, of that story of those statistics are not a lot of people ask. So you get even less. I mean, if you have a 50% response rate uh, of sales and you only ask 20% of the time, you're going to get are only a really small amount of people that are actually going to do it. So I don't really have a problem with asking, Hey, like my page or please, you know, subscribe to my channel today. Just do it with a grain of common sense. Don't do it every other sentence because then I, I don't, I don't want to hear it. I, I, you've already told me and just, you know, have a normal conversation with me. Just use social media to do it. I totally agree with you there. Now, Jonathan, we talked about Patreon a bit, but I noticed you use Patreon. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the platform and do you recommend it for um, startups, new entrepreneurs? Um, I think Patreon is, is more of a creator platform. It's for those that are creating content on a fairly consistent basis or that they're, they're going to be creating things, things like podcasts or music, uh, you know, uh, uh, songs or music albums or things like this. And not in a startup sense of, hey, we need some funding to get this project off the ground. It's different. Patreon is for is is that week to week or project to I mean month to month actually or project to project to project endeavor rather than a we need help to launch this service or this product or we need we need funding you know I, I know whether it's like a fidget tool or a book or or something like this where you're trying to create something one time patreon is for continuation it's for it's to it's to get some uh, support as you continue the journey not for a one time so that's how I see it differently between a startup and say a creator. But I still think that Patreon is is fantastic and can be used wonderfully for startups um, as a way to build a community and to be able to share value at a very high level. Well, I guess I'm using it in the way that um, may not be recommended because when I started O Natural Aromatherapy, mm -hmm. I was looking for startup capital, and I had a good following on, and I still do have a good following on Patreon. Uh, sorry, on. Periscope. Periscope allowed me to reach my audience every morning. So I would do the essential oil of the day, or I would do morning meditations with um, characteristics of essential oil. Persons loved that. It was a positive way to start the day. And I had people telling me, oh, don't quit. We'll support you. We'll help you keep going. You know, data in the Bahamas is expensive. And, you know, yeah, we'll help you. And I picked up a couple Patreons, so I started the Patreon page. Mm -hmm. But I don't think, um, well, of course, I stopped the morning affirmations. And I maintained the Patreons that I had, but I don't see growth in that area. Mm. But I'm going to continue to try. Um, I also plan to develop a product, which is... Um, my own brand of essential oils. So mm -hmm. that, for that reason, I was looking for the funding through Patreon to grow sure. that um, product line. But um, it's something to think about. And I, I offer it as an option to those using startup. But now I have to emphasize that it has to be, or it should be something that they want to um, produce money. Monthly or producing monthly rather than a, a 
startup looking for just startup capital. Sure. Yeah. It's yeah because Patreon's not a. It's that would be more of and and can I I can say the name and I Kickstarter. Kickstarter is like that launch platform, that launch effort. Patreon gets you um, week get gets you month to month. So I mean, in your case, it, wanting to develop or 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 foster the growth of a community by doing your your month, morning periscopes and saying, "Hey, would you be a monthly Patreon subscriber for as little as a dollar?" That would help me out. Would you be willing and be able to do that? And then within that group, within your Patreon group, offer them exclusive content. Maybe maybe do your your uh, your morning affirmations once or twice a week. But then the other days, do that in your Patreon group if you if you feel that that's something that they would benefit from, or just record it or do something special for them. But again, you know, the whole idea is that you have a community and you're offering them special value for, uh, um, you know, for participating and supporting you in that special way, not just giving you extra hearts or just giving you an extra share or a tweet out. Patreon. I'm glad. It, Sorry, I'm glad good, you mentioned that. <laughs> but they need to go somewhere. I am so glad you mentioned that record it. And that's exactly what I did. I recorded the affirmations and I put them in the community. So now they're telling each other, oh, if you want the affirmations, they're there in the community. You join the Patreon. So that was one positive thing that has happened. And I've had Patreon from the day I started that. Her name is Jennifer Aikman. She lives in the Netherlands, and I have to give her a big shout out because she has been with me from day one. I just love my patron. All right, we're winding down, but there's still two more questions that um, I would like to ask you. How can anyone in the audience, and I think we, we covered this actually, reach you, and that was by Twitter, you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And if there is a someone out there who wants to ask you a one-on-one -on -one question, how what's the best way? Would you mind reiterating that for us? Sure. If if somebody wants to reach out to me, you can you can do it a couple different ways. You can go to jonathantrip.com and you you click on the, the classic, you know, that the contact me button. You can click there and send me a message. And I get messages like that and and I respond to them. Those are pretty much email ones. But if you're on social, you can go over to my Facebook page and that's Get, get this, okay? It's my full name, jonathantrip.com, but it's all spelled out. So jonathantrip.com, you can reach me on my Facebook page. On Instagram is another one. Um, and I get a lot of, uh, uh, you know, direct message, uh, you know, asking me about different things. And I love it because, I mean, I love I love Instagram. It's really fun. And that's just, you know, you can follow me on that at J-O-N-T-R-I-P-P. -P, so that's just John Tripp. Um, so between, I think between those and, and for those that are watching that are, that are on um, that are on Twitter, yeah, absolutely, you send me a direct message. I message you back as soon as I see it. Great, thank you, Jonathan, for that. With that, I'm going to ask: Are there any last words you'd like to share with my audience before you go? Man, you know, I I I know this question is always coming. People always ask any last words, and I mean, I don't. Like, I mean, I hope to see you out there. I think maybe that's my last words. I hope to see you out there, right? You know, I hope this isn't the end of it. But no, in all seriousness, uh, I, I think I think one of the best things is, is you know, find uh, find people that, that you love to connect with, um, spend the time with them, uh, do do good things with them. And in, in the, I think the, the payback on that, the return and the relationships um, are oftentimes more than what you've ever put in. So I just want to encourage people to do that. With that, I want to say thank you, Jonathan, for being with us today at Tech Talk Live. It was my pleasure to have you here with me today. My, pardon the glitches that we may have had, and I will definitely have a replay out there for those of you who missed it. Please like, share, and comment on the replay. And if you have any questions for me, you can find me on my YouTube channel, which is Tech Talk Live, or my website, the Tech Talk Live website, which is techtalklive242.com. There's also a form if you have um, specific questions on our contact me form. You can um, put your questions there. We get back to you within 24 hours. Guaranteed. This is the Tech Talk Thank you all for being Live, here. Gomez. With, um, it was my pleasure, Jonathan, again. Thank you so much. I'm forever grateful. Bye for now.